This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today is a very, very special interview for me because I will be talking to Tamar Simon Hoffs, the mother of Susanna Hoffs of the Bengals. This is an interview I've been waiting for for a very long time, and the timing couldn't be more perfect, because this is happening the day before the seven-year anniversary of my car accident. I watched a lot of Bengals videos while I was in recovery in the hospital, because it had been a while since I had watched them, and I needed something to comfort me in the hospital, and who knew seven years later I'd be interviewing Tamar, Tamar Simon Hoffs, the mother of Susanna Hoffs. It's going to be great. Tamar um, directed Susanna in The All-Nighter, a great, great cult classic from 1987, celebrating its 35th anniversary. She also directed her in the, the Bengals video for Going Down to Liverpool, the one with uh, Leonard Nimoy. And um, she produced the video for uh, if, she, if She Knew What She Wants, which... Another guest of mine, Dan Perry, directed, and um, she also co-wrote Lepke, the gangster movie, Stony Island. She directed this short film called The Haircut. We're going to get into all that stuff today, and I just cannot wait. I am just so lucky. Like I said, tomorrow is the seven-year anniversary of my car accident, and I've just accomplished so much with 1,438 interviews so far that it's just been miraculous. It's just been outstanding, incredible. I just cannot believe it. Oh, I don't want to get too emotional. So, yeah, here is my interview with Tamar Simon Hoffs. Hello, Tommy. This is uh, Tamar Hoffs here. Hi, Mrs. Hello. Hi, Mrs. Hoffs. How are you this morning? Morning, knowing I'm gonna be talking to you. Oh, wonderful! I, I can't tell you what an honor this is. I thank you so much for taking the time this morning. Well, it's really fun, and today is lovely, and so I'm very interested in knowing the things you're interested that are like my life is. This <laughs> <laughs> is getting very long. <laughs> wonderful. So, going back in time, I was reading that uh, you have a Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy and you're a graduate uh, in Studies in Painting. Uh, were you originally on the trajectory of Art and Philosophy before filmmaking? Yes, that's what it was. I went to Yale and I thought I was going to be my head, not my hands, and... Uh, once I got there, it was the first year that they had women. So you can imagine how long ago that was. Yeah. And um, it, it uh, t turned me around very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, was painting and drawing pictures your specialty? Yep, then I was very much that. And it... it uh, Yeah, were, were your parents artists as well? Everything. <laughs> I have to tell you, your school that was so important, and it didn't have women. Mm -hmm. And then I, there I was, you know, in this very small group of women. Uh, it was it was exciting because we knew that people would be, you know, some a little tough, others are delighted that a school like that uh, would take new kids that, that were girls. Right. And if you knew where they put us, though, it was a joke <laughs> because they had not uh, put together the women yet. And so we had be living next to the, the, the deaf people. 
And other than that, it was great. So you're... you're mm-hmm. My husband is, was a young doctor, and mm-hmm. he came to do the work he needed to do uh, here. And it was a wonderful thing for me because we had uh, three uh, children and lots of wonderful air that was not cold anymore, you know. Yeah. It was just one of those wonderful things. And also, uh, we were young, but we were now able to be working the work we had. And I was very quickly connected with other people who were artists. Uh, did, did Los Angeles have an art scene in those days? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, what, what was the art scene like in Los Angeles? Well, it, it just being able to go anywhere I wanted to go, and people were outside, and I could make pictures, uh, you know, with anything I wanted to do. It was a tremendous change in living in the the other part of this wonderful world. I now uh, was able to, you know, meet not only people, but how to be able to work at the beach, at you know, everywhere. And I was very happy because I met many people. And uh, it, it was another thing here that I didn't uh, connect with was many quick people here would have uh, nice little groups of group to take together and go off and, you know, to do things as a group. Mm-hmm. And that was very important for me. Uh, and I met so many people because of it. And some of the best people were guys that just were, you know, with their kids. And um, they also like to do other things as well. And, and so it, it was the beginning of me uh, becoming in the movie business. How did you meet Leonard Nimoy? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way I met him. His, his kids and my kids went to uh, these little children places, uh-huh. and he asked me if um, he had he had no. Uh, that I was an artist, and he thought I might like to do a picture on his first picture that he was doing, mm-hmm. and he needed somebody to be doing some writing, uh, but pretty stuff for, for pictures of people, and uh, I had not, not ever done anything or even thought about becoming in working in, you know, I was just a writer. I wasn't uh, gonna be up uh, and doing something for a movie, but I thought, well, I'll try it. And it turned out that he needed me to write on him every day they were shooting. It was about a man who was in a, he was in a very bad place and he had to have his, his clothes uh, had to be covering him mm-hmm. because he was doing something very bad on his chest. And I was supposed to be helping him what I didn't know when I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. He wanted me to paint on his chest. <laughs> he <laughs> well, they shot this wonderful little movie. And uh, that was like, you know, the beginning of 
now uh, being somebody who loves doing work on movies. What What was Leonard Nimoy like? It was, I mean, it was incredible. He was uh, just, you know, young like me, and we were both interested in doing interesting new ways of work. That was always something that my family had been like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Do do what's new. Try to try to have a life that will open, not close, you know. Right. And it was just I was lucky that I had that kind of family that enjoyed, you know, before I was married and going away and all the things that. Uh, uh, are certainly a little scary sometimes, but you know when I uh, began to uh, learn about doing films, I was thrilled, and I realized that it was a very uh, wonderful thing that I probably never would think about um, if I hadn't come to the city here. Yeah. In, in 1975, you co-wrote the gangster film Lepke. How did you get involved in that project? Well, that was amazing because I knew uh, not just English, but I, I knew the guys uh, because I, they were from uh, 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 Israel. The Israel guys knew me because I knew how to t- how to t- start to yeah. talk in, uh, in their language, and they um, had taken me to some parties, and it turned out to be the guy was the new uh, 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 guy uh, who who had come to America. Uh, and and start a new uh, film. Uh, a very interesting, mm-hmm. uh, big movie. And so he called me because he had heard that uh, I knew Hebrew as well uh, as doing uh, work with movies. And uh, within a, uh, a week, he said, oh, by the way, if you're going to do this, you'll have to work uh, right next to me in the house where I'm living, and you can't be at your house. Mm-hmm. And of course, that was a little odd hearing that I thought, <laughs> you know, maybe it will be fun, but I have three children and a husband. I can't leave them. He said, no, you have to leave them or you can't do this. Um, and I thought, said to my husband, would you uh, please let me do that? And he said, sure, it's great. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's how I started. <laughs> I went and I sat. They locked me, actually, and I wrote the movie. <laughs> so that's uh, how my uh, new, new, complete part of my being in the um, movie business. Uh, but I did it, uh, even though I was lost. They, used to, they would bring me food. <laughs> <laughs> did you two uh, research about Lepke's life beforehand? I didn't 
<laughs> Did you grow up uh, watching the old Warner Brothers gangster movies? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you spend any time on the set of Lepke? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it was like, it was, you know, it was an incredible movie. And it was sort of just doing it. Um, and, and, you know, as the first time I really was deeply in it and getting my first, you know, name on the, the movie, you know, even that made me, it was feeling terrific. And, you know, it's, it's amazing how these kinds of things that seem like, um, you know, just hard work, have such deep things now as I look back and realize how many, you know, people I met and things that in, the, in movies are so important. And I have really felt great about, um, that, you know, all, all the people I've worked with I really have very close uh, and happy uh, uh, to be with them. Right. How, how did you team up with Andy Davis for Stony Island? Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> it's so funny because I was, I was having to go to Chicago. Mm-hmm. Which is where we cut the movie, and uh, and he was he was living close to me or something. We we sort of figured out that because I lived earlier in Chicago, um, then I you know knew the the city where we shot it and. It was one of these things of having met before and then getting together, and he was terrific. How, you know, we worked very close, uh, and I loved it. And my daughter, who is a very uh, wonderful person, yeah. uh, was, uh, we had her as the little girl that's, you know, a major part of the movie, and it, it, it was one of those kind of personal things because we really became such close friends. And, you know, I'm lucky because having had all the things that I had had before I had come to do, you know, that was really the first movie that was... I think we. I I think it was the Chicago feeling very uh, happy that they had had got gotten us doing this movie there. Um, but it also was more than just cutting a movie, you know. Yeah. We've been friends. We've been friends. Oh, completely with every one of these people, and um, it, you know, it's it's just you. Uh, you feel lucky that you can, can be able to be with people who are so wonderful, and that's how I feel. Yeah, it's a wonderful movie too. Um, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I talk. I, I talked to Wendy Barnes about the movie last year. She loved working uh, with you and Susanna. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What, so what's the inspiration behind the haircut? Well, oh, my God. That's, you know, when my daughter um, and some of her friends uh you know, we were just beginning yeah. her singing. And, um, and just, uh, they were young enough to just kind of hug around and help us. Um, and it was so much fun. I can't, to this day, I watch it. <laughs> I mean, 
How did you come to cast Joyce Boulevard as the manic? These kids and my kids were always a part <laughs> of these connections because we were all, after a little while, you know, a lot of people uh, that I realized were, uh, you know, terrific families. And so uh, all, almost all of the children. Um, of the guys that I was working with mm -hmm. also connected that way. And um, it, it made us not only the, the parents who are the guys, you know, who are, are going to do the work, but the kids that uh, became very good friends were, it was tremendously important and they still are friends um mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't have to I tell you what, uh you know where all they are but most of them are really so uh the children of these guys that i was working with um they all had a wonderful way with the family at their them and the children still work with them. It's it's a, 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 a amazing but true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In uh, 1984, you directed one of my favorite music videos with uh, "Going Down to Liverpool." Um, did you come up with the concept of the girls in the back seat while Leonard Nimoy was driving the car? Come out 
and it was so much fun. And honestly, we learned so much because when I would say um, to my friendly man who I had known for a long time to laugh, to, to laugh and have fun, and he said, Tammy, I know I'm going to not let you do this if you don't let me just not say a word of this. I want to be totally having the girls do their thing, and I'm not going to say anything to them. And each time that when we started, we were all saying, no, you have to talk, you have to talk a little bit. Nope. <laughs> and that was how we began to be able to get that one go through. He wasn't, he wasn't going to, um, you know, become anything but that very stiff man that I had so much fun. It was great. As you know, I talked to Dan Perry last year, um, and we talked about if she if she knew what she wants. It's such a beautiful video. What was that a specific song on the Different Light album that you liked and wanted to produce a video for? Well, that and, and all, all the stuff. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's a it's a real uh, group now of so many of of. Uh, you know, the, these are all kids that have had parents who uh, were involved, and now we're, we're sort of, I mean, especially Sue, um, my daughter, mm-hmm. um, you know, are coming back and working with us because it's sort of like, and maybe it's something about the way the, the uh, the world is not as um, loose and we feel like we want to get closer together. But it is really amazing how we all, all of the kids and all of the grown-ups, uh, and I hope we can continue, are very close. And it's, it's great. It certainly is. Where did the inspiration for the All Nighter come from? Oh, that was I mean, that was an incredible thing because I when I first started that I had to, said to Sue that I wanted her to be very, uh, you know very much the same as the other girls in this movie and we um, we thought of that it shouldn't be that Sue because she was the girl who has all the problems and she's the special one but I didn't want it to seem like because I was the mother that I was gonna make it, you know, better for the uh, movie. So at one point when we got to a place where we had to go up to the top of the, uh, the place and we were working in, in, in uh, pretty, pretty near the, the, uh, car, uh, the, the building, that we had found that allowed us to go was the high building uh, right here in, uh, uh, near, the, uh, near the beach. And so we didn't realize, though, that it was about 15 high of not very well put together uh, uh, of this building. And there wasn't an easy way to put somebody up there that you could make it work. But it was right by the beach, and that was the, what we were looking for. And so Sue and I decided we would do it ourselves. We would shoot some to show the guys that we knew how to get 
and do it. <laughs> and then <laughs> when we did this, we got caught ourselves. We got caught in the way when we had to turn around <laughs> after we had shot this thing. It's, it's, a, it's a building that's so here. And every time I go past it, I always say, God, thank you. <laughs> because it was very hard to return once we got up and showed. It was a place where Sue was playing uh, very upset at that moment in the, in the movie. And we really went through something just ourselves about that. It was a, it was a night as well, uh, but it's in the movie, and we got it, and that's all that mattered. And Sue said, "That's how it's going to be when you're in this business." And I hope not too much, but it was a really wonderful thing to uh, work like that with your own child. Yeah, how long did it take to film the movie? Is it true that um, Universal asked Susanna to record a song with the Bengals? Um, you mean now? No, no, for uh, the All Nighter. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, that was very. Really, it, it was. It was uh, something that I really don't know. You know, I, I never. Um, when, you know, in all, in all these years, actually, I must admit that my, I always want somebody else to decide, is it right or is it wrong? Right. So, um, and I think, uh, to be honest, now that I've gone through so much, I am so happy that I've always been that way. Uh, because it is, you know, it's it's tough on so many ways of knowing what's right and what's wrong, particularly if it isn't just, you know, what are you doing about somebody's hair or, you know, <laughs> or, or whatever the problems that come up. And as we go get uh, uh, in bigger situations, especially uh, for my, my own daughter and other kids that followed, you know, in our, our lovely way, mm -hmm. um, it, it's great not to get caught in things that can be tough. Absolutely. Do you, do you have any upcoming projects you could mention? because I have at least three very strong uh, things that I'm working with. One is a short film a, a, uh, that is a, a day or two uh, finished. And um, I love it. I, I don't, I, I want to be careful not say anything more simply because we're still th thinking about some of the music and some of the, uh, you know, what a, the lovely finale so we can get it out. But um, I, I'm so lucky because what I do uh, often, I'm asked to come and um, to, to people who are working and particularly women and to have me help them to uh, 
with whatever they need some help. And I just think it's great to do that. Um, and so uh, this particular one is even more than that because it, it became a very uh, deeply uh, me doing the movie with the, with the girl. Uh, and usually it's a girl who I do work that way with, but not always. I have some terrific guys that I'm working with uh, right now, too. And then another one is uh, uh, a lovely uh, movie, movie that is uh, at a lower level, but very good, too. And so, you know, when you... When you do this life can be been absolutely wonderful mrs hoffs uh, i can't tell you what an honor this has been thank you so much for talking to me this morning and thank you so much for the gift of susanna she's an excellent singer and songwriter thank you so much and i, I i'm not kidding i hope i get to see you so uh, I would love that. I really would. Hopefully, if this whole pandemic can, you know, go away, <laughs> we can okay. see each other in person. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, we're, you got, yeah. Uh, when I see it and hear it, I'll make sure that I make a connection, a nice connection that it, that is just to be fun. Thank you so much. My pleasure. You have yourself a wonderful, wonderful day. Well, there you have it. Tamar Simon Hoffs, ain't she a sweet lady? Oh, I'm so glad I got to talk to Susanna Hoffs' mother. I just cannot believe it. That was so wonderful. And thank you, George, for accompanying um, Mrs. Hoffs. Um, I think everything turned out wonderful. You both were outstanding. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.